Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 131 of my new comics haul series. I've just got five issues today, um, but this is a series where I show you all the books I pick up at my local comic shop every week. Uh, I think I've got four from Marvel. I've got one from Image, which I'll show at the end. So pretty quick week. It won't be too long of a video here, but let's just get right into it with probably the biggest Mar Marvel release of the week, right? We've got Superior Spider-Man Returns, number one. This one's a little bit pricey. Uh, it costs $7, but I think you get like 40 pages, so it's pretty worth the price. This one was a no-brainer for me as soon as I heard they were going to be coming out with it. This is just a one-shot, but it's leading into like this new ongoing Superior Spider-Man series they're doing, right? Uh, and I guess it's the 10th anniversary of Superior Spider-Man already. Um, I didn't read comics back when that you know, original series came out, but I've read uh, all of it in trade paperbacks. It's one of my favorite Spider-Man stories. So we've got the original creative team coming back on to do this one shot, which is somehow also going to be leading into the next series. So, you know, Dan Slott is writing this. We've got, um, I think Mark Bagley is doing some of the artwork. He's going to be the artist on, uh, on the new, like, ongoing once that comes out. Ryan Stegman doing artwork in here. So it's just all the classic Superior Spider-Man um, artists are coming back for this. Too bad it's just a one shot. I feel like, honestly, it would have been cool to do like one of those mini series that Marvel's been doing that's set in the past. Uh, but that's the deal with this one, right? It's like telling a story that hasn't already been told in that original Superior Spider-Man era. And it's supposed to, I think, introduce like some kind of new villain that's going to be central to the new run uh, once that comes out. I think next month they're starting it up. I mean, we'll see. We've already had, like, Superior Spider-Man relaunches before. There's that one uh, There was only 12 issues that ran a couple years ago. That was actually a run that I liked a lot. So curious to see how they're going to get Otto Octavius back into the Spider-Man persona, right? So we'll see about this. That's Superior Spider-Man Returns, number one. Next up from Marvel, though, we've got a team book. It's Avengers number six. So this has one of those backup stories that's like kind of unrelated to the main one. Other than that though, it's Jed McKay writing, right? So I really liked his Avengers run so far. It's had its highs and lows already in just the first six issues, I'd say. I was getting a little bit bored of the whole Ash and Combine idea over the last couple issues, but I feel like uh, his greatest strength as a writer of Avengers so far is just like playing into each individual Avengers abilities and how they fare against each, like, member of the Ashen Combine, who are these, like, world-killing beings, I guess, that were just introduced in this run. Uh, so maybe some first appearances that might be worth something in the future here. I'm not sure whether these characters are going to pan out to amount to anything in the long run, but this impossible city has been also looming over Earth, so we've got Captain America and Black Panther, um, like, investigating that, I guess. I mean, we'll see. I think we've got, like, a long-term plan for this series ever since Kang told the Avengers about all of those, um, what are they called? Something events? I'm forgetting already. But uh, like these specific events in history that are going to come in the future that he's warned the Avengers about that are going to be happening, so they're preparing and everything. Here's some art from the backup story um, featuring some sort of like lesser known character, so we'll see if that's any good. That's Avengers number six, though. Next up, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy number seven, another new team book relaunch that Marvel did recently. This one I've actually been really liking. It started off uh, like kind of, kind of on a middle ground for me. I wasn't really sure how to feel about it, but it's gotten better and better as each issue has gone on. Uh, this is set like one year after the previous Guardian series, Al Ewing's run, which wrapped up a couple years ago now. This is some crazy looking artwork. Uh, Kev Walker is on the art on this. He's been doing a better and better job with each issue, in my opinion. He's really good at drawing like big splash pages with you know cosmic landscapes and stuff. But this series has been following this uh, kind of disbanded group of Guardians who are um, holding on by a thread. They're almost like space outlaws at this point. They're just pursuing this group fall uh, virus that's been like spreading across the galaxy, right? So last issue we actually got the origin behind group fall and how. Groot ended up uh, like in the state that he is now, destroying worlds, burning them down, turning people into like flora type beings. Uh, and the Guardians have now been affected by Groot Fall. It looks like they're being taken over by it somehow. And we'll see what happens after that, right? I'm not sure how long this Groot Fall arc is going to be going on for, but I'm glad they're giving it a few issues at least, right? Like this will probably carry on pretty far into the series. It's such a big concept that I feel like it would have been a little rushed if they only did it in like one story arc. So uh, it's good to see that they're doing storytelling the right way with that series. Next up, though, this is the second to last issue of this one. We got Moon Knight City of the Dead, number four. Uh, this is a little bit chaotic of a series. Uh, it's definitely a lot different than the main Moon Knight ongoing, which has been written by Jed McKay. But I'd still say that this is pretty much worth the price. Uh, 
it's like not something you need to read. It doesn't really tie into anything that's happening in the main run too much. But if you're new to Moon Knight, this is probably a good thing to pick up if you're just trying to get like a feel for the character and everything. It really dives into all of his past villains, uh, which we've seen in this City of the Dead that he's had to go down into uh, to rescue this little kid's soul who he's supposed to be protecting. Uh, he's like gotten looped in with a lot happening down in the City of the Dead, right? He's like encountering all these old villains. Uh, his brother, I think Randall Spector is his name, is like taking on this identity as the Spectre Knight. I, I'm really bad with names today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, he has, oh, the Jackal Knight, right. So his, like, dead brother is also in the City of the Dead. So it's really rekindling a lot of old relationships that Moon Knight had with these different villains and stuff that he's killed, whether it was on purpose or on accident over the years. So definitely good for, like, a long-term Moon Knight reader. I've read a good chunk of the more modern runs that they've done, so it's been kind of cool to see characters come back from that. Definitely a cool add-on if you're reading the Moon Knight ongoing series, but it's not, like, essential reading in any way. Lastly, though, I won't spend too long on this one. This one I got for free. My comic shop was able to give out free copies of this, um, but it did come out this week. It's from Image Comics, Knights Number 1. I really don't know anything about this. It's a pretty hefty issue, though. There's definitely a lot of pages in here. Uh, literally can't tell you anything. Maybe it's somehow vampire-related based on the art here, but it looks like a little bit simplistic of an art style, but I will definitely give this a read and see how it is. This is not something I would normally pick up, uh, just based off of the cover and stuff. It doesn't look immediately intriguing in any way, but it could be a hidden gem that I just wouldn't have gotten if it wasn't for free. Maybe I'll continue on with this one. We'll see. But those were the five issues I picked up for New Comic Book Day this week. A little bit lighter of a week, so I'll have some time to catch up on reading. Uh, let me know what you guys picked up, though, if you're grabbing the new Superior Spider-Man run. Let me know all that down in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.